Hello, everybody. Welcome to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I introduce my guest, I just want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Blue Chew. Blue Chew is there for you when you need that extra confidence in the bedroom. And right now, you can actually try them out for free. All you have to do is use my promo code Holly at checkout and pay only $5 in shipping. So make sure you go to bluechew.com and use promo code Holly to try your first sample for free. Pay only $5 in shipping. Okay, let me introduce my guest today who really needs no introduction. I've had her on before. She's I know I say this about a lot of people, but she's legitimately one of my favorite people in the industry. I love working with her so much. She is like a ray of light. And I'm just so excited to have her here. Of course, I am referring to the incomparable, the one and the only Anna Fox. Yay! <laughs> That's so nice. Thank you. <laughs> I, I hit that drum roll so hard that I tweaked my mic and now it keeps flipping up. That was a real drum. Yeah, I know. I was so excited about it. And then, okay, all right, stay there. There you go. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Of course. Oh, like I said, like, I really do, like, love, everyone just loves you. What's it, what's it like to just be loved by everybody? How does that feel? It feels really cool. You know, um, I guess sometimes you go through life kind of questioning whether people like you or not. But then mm. every time I get out of my hermit cave and actually <laughs> see people they're they're so nice and they'd like they'll come and whisper little shits in my ear and like hey you know you're 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 pretty dope right you know yeah fuck fuck this or fuck that but yeah you, you're dope so i i kind of like that little that little yeah. geppetto just letting me know that they still love me i mean it's a good argument against isolating right yeah because when we <laughs> isolate we get like really in our own head and the stories that we make up in our own minds are like kind of crazy they can be aggressive yeah. and i'm glad COVID's over because yes. i'm outside <laughs> Oh my God. I, I know. touch grass. <laughs> How was COVID for you? Because our last interview was before COVID. Yeah, man. Um, I thought I was productive, but I really, <laughs> I really wasn't. I just bought a bunch of outfits on Amazon and did OnlyFans and ate burgers. Like I had gained so much weight and the person I was dating had also gained weight and we were in denial that both of us were a little fluffy. Mm. So like I'd wake up like every week and be like, am I a little? A little smushy. He's like, no, because if you're smushy, I'm smushy. So neither one of us are smushy. And when COVID kind of like was wrapping up, I was like in panic mode. And I went to the gym like that was like the first time in my life that I ever was like in the gym, like beast mode. I had like two trainers. I only fucked one of them. Um, <laughs> you know what? That's progress, girl. It was progress. <laughs> it, it was motivation. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. You know, that's funny because I remember when I first met you yeah. because I think one of your very first photo shoots was with me, right? Yeah, yeah. My first adult anything was with you. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, I know. That. But I remember you showed up and you just have like this incredible body, like no, not an ounce of body fat or anything like that, amazing muscle tone. Mm -hmm. And I think I asked you like, what's your secret thinking that you're in the gym all the time? You're like, I don't ever go to the gym. I'm like, no. I hate you. Yeah. I hate you. Not fair. I just grew up beating up my brothers because WWF was really fun. And like, you know, you play that in the, on the couches and stuff. Uh -huh. So I just think being active like my whole life yeah. definitely helped. So because when I wasn't, I got the reverse happened. So yeah, being active, fluffy. you just got to move. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so how did, I mean, you said you weren't productive, but you no. shot for your OnlyFans. And yeah. we all know that OnlyFans like blew up over it COVID did. and changed a lot of people's lives. Yeah. How did it change things for you? Like, how do you, do you see work differently now? Oh, oh yeah. Like, I feel like I can retire <laughs> whenever I want. Like every other week I get my schedule and I'm like, do I have to go shoot for such and such? Like, yeah. I don't have to. Like, I can just show my feet to my fans on OnlyFans and they'll be more than happy, you know? Yeah. Like, they're happier to engage with me one-on-one -on -one than me doing studio work. So mm -hmm. I'm, like, closer and closer to, like, retirement, but I like I like performing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, COVID and OnlyFans definitely gave me, like, a lot of security mm -hmm. uh, before everything was just kind of, like, a question mark. Like, oh, I hope. I work next month or I mm -hmm. hope I work or like uh, don't ruffle any feathers so I can work. But now I'm just like, I don't give a fuck. Like I got only fans and they're my fans. So, mm -hmm. you know, n nothing but me can make my fans go away. So yeah. I've got like a whole bunch of like 
I don't know, what is that thing that dudes have when they're all pumped up? Like ego, testosterone. testosterone. Yeah, I feel pumped <laughs> up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned ruffling feathers, and I feel like that's been one of the most significant changes that I've seen with OnlyFans. I mean, obviously, like performers being more financially independent, mm -hmm. but the security that comes from that and the ability to be more free to say what you think mm -hmm. and establish boundaries, how has that been for you? I think it's fun. It's kind of fun being able to um, not get in trouble, you know, for what you say, for what is your truth, you know, mm -hmm. before I would get calls from my agent all the time, like, you need to take that tweet down. Mm -hmm. But now I'm like, I'm not taking shit down. Like mm -hmm. I said it, it was said, this happened. Um, you know, bringing awareness to other people is positive. So if you want to stop that, then, then you got to change your own behavior, you know, mm -hmm. like I'll stop talking if you stop fucking around yeah um and i probably wouldn't say anything if you weren't fucking around so yeah it's kind of fun to go out there and like speak up and and do that because i felt like I, I never really did that before yeah so it's like i feel like vivica fox like a new like <laughs> like a like a vixen like a little <laughs> do you feel more empowered yeah a hundred percent and does 100%. it make you feel safer at your job it does because i know that people won't fuck with me how they used to fuck with me you know or other people in my circle, like if if somebody is my friend, then they'll be like, oh, OK, like, oh, oh, Anna, like, helped you do this. OK, so let's be nice because she knows Anna and Anna's going to take care of her, not going to let anything happen. So I think uh, with speaking up, a lot of changes have happened that are positive. Like, I can't say there's no shenanigans uh, on set or wherever, but um, I like to think that they've kind of dwindled down. Mm -hmm. I think people are a little bit scared, so they're acting yeah. accordingly. Yeah, I mean, I def I can tell you just from a perspective as a producer, you know, working for MindGeek after, you know, and I've, sp I've spoken about this a lot of times, but after that kind of Me Too wave came through the adult mm -hmm. industry, you know, and a lot of people were being called out for abusive yeah. behavior, a lot of directors yeah. and stuff like that, a lot of companies. And my geek was like, okay, like, <laughs> who is okay and who do we have to fire? And right. they, like, interviewed a bunch of models mm -hmm. and, like, agents and stuff. And and some people got fired. Yeah. And some people got a promotion. There you go. That was me. I did never try to make anyone, like, give me a blowjob in a car, so I got a promotion. Right? <laughs> you deserve that promotion, Holly. You have never pressured me for a BJ ever. No. <laughs> No, 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 no. Um, probably the fact that I don't have a penis also helps in it that helps. scenario. It helps. It does. <laughs> so you have actually now flipped to the other side of the camera, yes. and you've started producing and directing for Playboy. And yes. I can I see the little shout out that you're wearing right now. Yay! They love me. <laughs> so tell me how that came about. Um, I think I got to become a producer um, very accidentally. Like I never like inquired about it with them. Um, I just had a shoot with them and uh, they sent me what they, their little rundown of what they were gonna have me do. And I was like, yeah, this is cute, but I've literally done this look like a hundred times. Like, yeah. can I bring some things to the table? And they were like, sure. So I kind of like flipped the whole script on them and like brought everything. Like they had a whole rack of clothes, but I brought a whole rack of clothes and like the makeup artist did this. And I was like, well, I, I need you to do that. So I just took over the entire shoot and just like powered through. And they were like, wow, you should really be a producer. And I was like, hey, stop it. like okay. <laughs> and they're like, you should, would you, would you be down? And I was like, well, I'm not going to say no to any challenge. I feel like I'm a little competitive. So I definitely wanted to say yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, it just kind of took off. Like, uh, it's really hard um, making sure that whatever model you choose feels like you care about them, that you're not just putting them in like m a model template, mm -hmm. you know? So trying to show the model's individual traits and their their personality is really hard uh, mm -hmm. through just like lingerie. Yeah. So, you know, telling a story is, it's kind of hard and I'm not a writer. So it's, been challenging but really fun at the same time <laughs> and it also depends on the model right I mean obviously like you have character and you have ideas so mm -hmm. I feel like if I had a shoot where you know they wanted to collaborate with you that would not be hard but yeah. some models are just like I don't know yeah like, do whatever or their yeah. ideas are 
completely unachievable. 100%. Oh my God. You know, God. <laughs> or sometimes they're just not very good. Not very good. Yeah. It, it, it's hard because I went from a model who had nothing but personality to a model that was just like a lot softer mm-hmm. and like, like the first one spoke for herself. Like I didn't have to do anything, just bring what she does. And she did what she did. Like I could have gave her a blank piece of paper and she would have still like painted a picture. Mm-hmm. But this other girl was just very calm, very soft spoken, doesn't really like much, doesn't really do much. And I was mm-hmm. like, how do I make her, you know, mm-hmm. just as that, that shoot just as important as the first shoot, just as important as the next shoot. So mm-hmm. it's like a challenge to like challenge yourself to do better um, to make the model feel seen. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and then I, I don't do the camera work. So that's another, uh, like challenge I have going on with me. Like, oh, maybe I think we can shoot this place outside and the, that's not how cameras work. Mm-hmm. So I've been learning a lot on the job, which is a lot of fun, but ultimately it feels like playing dress up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's what, pretty fun. Now your first shoot, that was with Misty Stone, yes, right? Yeah. Misty has all the all the glitter jazz yeah. juice. <laughs> that girl has got personality in space. Yeah. Like that girl's got a lot. A hundred percent. You could just put her in a box and it, it'll turn into glitter somehow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's a lot of fun. Uh-huh. Um so how was that first shoot? First of all, I do want to say I know the location that you shot at, those motherfucking stairs. Oh. Uh, did you because I remember the first time I shot there, my crew looked at me, they're like Where's the elevator? I'm like, there is no elevator. They're like, we have to carry equipment yeah. up and down those stairs. I was like, I'm sorry. The stairs, the rooms were so small. Very small. Like, uh, Such a beautifully designed house. It's beautiful. But, like yeah, on so. pictures, in the picture, it looked like a lot bigger. Mm-hmm. No mention of stairs. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then they had like cut, they had a green backyard in the pictures. They had cut all of that out. So it was just dirt. Yeah. And that was like the, the shoot. Yeah. So we just kind of had to work around it and like. It, we're, we were just so lucky that it was Misty because yeah. she, you didn't even notice that there was dirt in the background. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I, I was honestly a little nervous because it's Misty, like, you know, her reputation for being on time. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? <laughs> she was on time. She was on time. She was on time. Um, but she did her thing. And like, I'm, I was so thankful that she was my first model because yeah. it, it made it a lot it made it a lot easier to move forward because my problems were not her. Mm-hmm. And so moving forward, I made sure that like everything else was better, but then like the models weren't her. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to like live up to somebody who's like misty, you yeah. know? Uh, so, <laughs> and then, yeah. And then have, yeah. And I mean, that's like one of the, <clears throat> I mean, I know you mentioned that you don't know a lot about the cameras, but I will say that I think that the most important, like, aspect of being a director is the capability to, to, de- to work with people. Yeah. You know, to lead people and to, and to be able to deal, you know, shoot a Misty and mm-hmm. then get somebody who's not yeah. like Misty, who's, mm-hmm. you know, not, um, not so much glitter Yeah, and, and be able to like work with that personality yeah. and bring out the best in her. And mm-hmm. so like, it, it really is a lesson in people skills and like psychology sometimes too. A hundred percent. I feel like a chef in the kitchen, like, are you good over there? Yes, chef. You know, like you just run around and check that everybody's good and everything's good and you over prepare, Mm -hmm. you know, like do not just come with one, two, three, three things. Mm -hmm. You have to have over abundance of everything for all of the scenarios that can fuck up, you know? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so crazy how like just the, I remember I shot a I shot somebody for Playboy. I won't say who it is, but um, she was not in the adult industry, and she l- lied about her sizes, oh. which was really weird. Oh no! Um, like she said that she was much smaller than she was. Oh no! And thankfully, uh-huh. my stylist, who yeah. worked with a lot of celebrities looked her up and was like, that girl, I think she said she was a zero. She's like, she's not a zero. Yeah. She's like a 12. Uh, oh, like, no. It was like very That's night and day. drastic and yeah. different. And so she's like, it's okay. I've dealt with people who would like to think they're one thing and they're not. She's like, I will bring stuff that fits her. But you know what she did? She made sure to cut all the tags. size tags Smart. So out she of the clothes see. so the girl wouldn't look at it and be like, 
I'm not, I'm this, not this size. size. Yeah. So like she could go on yeah. thinking she was like This is a zero. A zero a when zero. it was like a ten. Well, there's a zero in it. So Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you just like white out the one part. Yeah. <laughs> just cut out the one. <laughs> but just yeah, stuff like that, which is like so crazy because you think to yourself, Well, this is like I'm here to help you. Right. Like I don't care what size you are. Like it I know does, what you look please like. Please tell like, me your size. Please tell me your size. You will not look cool in that size zero yeah like let me dress you in a way that's most flattering for you like we're working together on this like don't lie to me yeah about your size please don't lie to me because that's it's not gonna work but it's so weird like some people in their head they're like and i don't know maybe everybody else does that and they cut the tags out so maybe like she really does think she's a size zero maybe i don't know i don't know but like crazy <laughs> shit like that that you yeah. come across and it's just something that and you just got to be like okay you know what? Yep. We're going to we're going to handle this. Mhm. Got to work with it. And then I've had my first model not show up after I like planned a production. Oh no. Yeah, that was like really Just, like, crazy. Just like straight up ghosted you? Pretty pretty much. She said it wasn't planned out when we had plans like over a month in advance. Like uh -huh. I got like a disco ball in the shape of her the letter of her name and stuff like that. So it was planned out, but the closer it got, I was like, so I'm trying to buy your flight. And then she stopped talking to me like slowly and slowly until it was just like, well, I'm not doing it. And I was like, but I, it's in two days. Like, yeah. And I have all of these disco balls of your name. Like what, yeah. <laughs> what do I do? So it worked out honestly a lot better, but you that was, somebody else I found somebody else that name. was the same size. No, I had to get rid of the, <laughs> I had to get rid of the, the letters, but but it turned out better because mm -hmm. the model was like super happy. She fit and they were the same size. Like I've never seen somebody with like a 30, like triple D. I, that doesn't even like register in my head. Like that yeah. body size. I was like, so you're like this big with this big of boobies. How yeah. am I going to find somebody yeah. like that? But I found someone and it worked out. Yeah. Yeah. I know that's funny. That's always the consideration because we would get last minute cancellations for like twisties or something. And we had people's like with the wardrobe bot, yeah. we'd be like, you have to pick somebody, you know, call Rachel. Like, mm -hmm. you got to pick somebody who's this size, mm -hmm. like, because I'm screwed. Yeah, this outfit's here and somebody has to wear this. <clears throat> yeah. I can't fit it. <laughs> so, <laughs> What has been the most rewarding thing about producing and directing for you? Um, The feedback. Like, when it's all done and it comes out and the model DMs me, she's like, oh, my God. I'm like, I know, right? Like, <laughs> the fact that the models trust me to put them in those spaces mm -hmm. and the crew, like, uh, like they all work so well together. And I don't use the same people each time. Like, I may okay. have used, like, the same photographer, but the crew was different or, you know, people mix up. And each time... Um, it's just like a, a right combination of people and everybody work together so well. Like we very rarely are like arguing with each other. Like if something happens and it's just like, oh, there's no grass, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like they're not going to be like, oh, no, there's no fucking grass. You know, yeah. some people get so yeah crazy. But so far, everybody has worked together really well. And then the product always comes out really nice. Like I'm like, oh, shit, I did that. And yeah. They wouldn't know that I bought that on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you how many like steals that we've gotten from Sheen that we've made look like like the avant garde. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the fun thing is like taking just some money and making a product that makes it look <laughs> worth gold. You know, yeah. priceless. Yeah. <laughs> What's the most challenging thing? Having just uh like us limitations on being able to produce as much as I want to. Mm. Like I'm one of, I think, eight producers and there's 12 months in the year and they have the opportunity to produce way more than I do because they're not sucking dick on their off time. So... <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> sucks for them. Sucks for them. But <laughs> you know, I'm I'm limited in, in how much I can produce and mm -hmm. I wish I could just like produce full time. Um, but my brain but probably wouldn't even allow me. Like that's yeah. it's insane. Like the stress to like get the clothes here on time and mm -hmm. all of them. Is this right? Does it actually fit her? Mm -hmm. Is it going to fall apart? Cause we've had things like, like break. break. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you're like, who has the glue or the yeah. needle? Like, like the chain mail bikinis. Oh, Those things it, always break. They do. Yeah. And I love using things that are not normal. Like mm -hmm. uh, if, if it's just a bra and panties, I'm like, but is there like a, a chain or a yeah. firework on it or something, you know? <laughs> if we can't have something like a little something on there, you know, not just regular Target panties. I want some 
some flair, some pizzazz. Some pizzazz. Yeah. So I think finding finding things that don't relate to someone else's work, trying to have my own individual look while highlighting the model's look, while respecting all these people who are working for me, mm-hmm. and then making sure that they eat because I want people to eat, so I, I go so, ham on the snacks. <laughs> I know. That's so important, too, and that's something that a lot of producers overlook, which is crazy to me. Like, mm-hmm. some people will have, you know, 12-hour days, and they don't feed their crew. Yeah, or they'll just have, like, water bottles and, like, some bars or something, yeah. and I'm like, if you were not even moving around and you were sitting outside on the sidewalk, would you feel comfortable just having, like, a yeah. Quest bar and a bottle of water all day? Yeah. No way. So I, I do, like, a whole charcuterie thing for – the day because I feel like people will pick it up more mm-hmm. if it's like opened and like, mm-hmm. oh, I smell an olive, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, eat food, but be sexy. <laughs> <laughs> and the great thing about shooting for Playboy is you don't need to worry about dick hands in the snacks. No, no, yeah. <laughs> it's like everyone's hands are clean. Yeah. It's very rare that I have to stop a model from even like touching herself too much, you yeah. know? Like they're, like, they're not like finger banging yeah. before they pick up crackers so yeah it's it's pretty kosher <laughs> it's pretty because good. it's you know what i mean like i the, do the dick hands and the snacks I've i can't tell you how many it. times i've have to be like no stop, stop touching no. your dick the guy like comes over to the fucking like snack place he's like mm, what's, mm. Up, what's delicious let me try this i'll like, pick up this away. banana no and like some dudes there's this one dude that just touches his dick from the moment he enters the, the the house until like, and it's like hours until we need his dick ready. But he's just the whole time just like fluffing it. And I'm like, just, we're talking about like taxes, like stop touching your dick, you know? Yeah. Like, but they, and then they're then they they'll like come up and hug someone, and I'm like, so much dick hand. Oh my god. Yeah, dick hand. Yeah, <laughs> I would I would wipe walk around with wipes just to like wipe off the dick hand don't you know <laughs> dick hand monitor <laughs> i'm down i'll take that job <laughs> oh my God. all right guys we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll be right back we will talk about anna's appearance in hbo's winning time um and so much more so hang around we'll see you in just a minute this episode of holly randall unfiltered is brought to you by blue chew Sometimes life gets stressful, and that can affect us in so many different ways, even our performance in the bedroom. Or maybe you're dating someone new and you're ready to go all the way, and you want to make sure that you come out of the gate strong. Whatever your reasons are, Blue Chew can help you keep your erections going stronger for longer. This is an online service where you can consult with a licensed medical provider privately online. No visits to the doctor's office, no standing in the line at the pharmacy. They ship directly and discreetly to your door for much cheaper than you'd get from your doctor's prescription. With the same ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable form, Blue Chew could be the answer to your performance anxiety. So check out Blue Chew today with this amazing offer exclusively for my listeners. Try it for free when you use our promo code HOLLY at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code HOLLY, all one word, to receive your first month for free. Hey guys, we are back. All right, so Anna, you appeared in HBO's Winning Time about the Lakers in the 80s. Um, Tell me about how you ended up getting that role and what was it like? Um, Honestly, I think I got all of my mainstream roles because I was willing to be naked uh, on camera. And I'm not sure if people are just don't want that attached to their name, but my butthole's already on the internet. So (laughs) yeah, they were like, well, does anybody know anybody that's cool being naked? And I was like, me. (laughs) Yeah. So it was just through from a friend of a friend, uh, Charlotte Stokely reached out to me and her friend and made the connection happen. Um, And I was really excited because I, I'm not currently a fan of any sports, but when I was younger, I really did like the Lakers. Mm -hmm. And I had worked for Starbucks, and Magic Johnson was like, he would come to the Starbuckses and meet us and stuff like that. So I was like, fucking loved Magic Johnson. And I like followed the Lakers parade when they won the Nationals in LA, Mm -hmm. broke my sandal. I was just like super about sports that year. And then to like come full circle and be able to like fuck fake Magic Johnson, I was like, yeah, 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 I'm proud of this one. And the guy, uh, Quincy James, I believe, he, I feel like he practiced for that because I was like, oh, don't, don't worry, I'm a professional. He's like, he, he was a professional. <laughs> Once they said action, 
I was like, had to look back at him like, who is this? Like, because he was so like in the rhythm. I was like, oh, I, well, you do have sex, you know, but he was like not shy to like fake fuck me. Right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, I'm like, it was softcore, right? It was softcore. Yeah. I, I, I wish it wasn't, but it was <laughs> softcore. But he was just very like, he was like, I'm not going to look like I don't know what I'm doing. I'm playing Magic Johnson and Magic put it down. <laughs> so he was in and I was like, wow, oh my God, okay. Did you guys have a um, intimacy coordinator on set? We did. We definitely did. She was really cute. Um, I felt like I didn't need her, but I found out that I did because I kept walking around like it was a like a sex house. And so there were like naked people and things like that. And my character was just topless. So I was like, oh, well, I'm not offensive. I took off my robe and was walking around. They're like, do you need your robe? And I was like, no. And they're like, do you need your robe? And I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? And I didn't realize that it's kind of like different on their set. Like they yeah. do not like nudity. And I'm like, but we're about to fake fuck, you know? Yeah. So the the intimacy coordinator was there to like make me calm down. <laughs> so she was basically there to wrangle you. Yeah. Because I was ready. I was like, oh, so what position should we do? Like he's tall, doggy. And she's like, Anna, 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 Anna. <laughs> calm down. You know, like he's going to do, he's had his own separate talk. We're going to have your talk, you know? Uh, so I was, I was pretty eager and, uh, I saw like nervousness going around in the room and it was kind of cute to like, oh yeah, this is not porn. R right. Real people don't normally just whip it out in front of strangers, yeah. you know? So yeah, she was very useful. useful. <laughs> <laughs> so you said that she, what was the talk like? Like what, I'm just so curious yeah. about how that works on a mainstream set. Cause I've also only ever Worked on right. Adult. Um, well, it was like uh, very much like our boundaries checklist. Like, what are mm -hmm. you comfortable doing? Because mm -hmm. uh, there was three of us girls, and we were all originally hired to do something sexual, mm -hmm. but one of the girls didn't really want to do that, so we changed it. And she was just kind of like the girl in the threesome that's just jacking off in the corner, <laughs> kind mm -hmm. of thing, um, and kind of like uh, just establish how long everybody was willing to do this or that. Like, do you want your tits out? Is it okay if he touches them? And mm -hmm. are you cool with kissing? Um, so it was just like an elementary version of our like checklist, mm. which was cute. But so it didn't go all the way to no, fisting no. or there was none facials, of that. Yeah, sperm gargling. There was none of that, and I was like, "Well, what are we gonna talk about? Like, if he gets a like, if he gets a boner, like, oh, yeah. I was curious. I was like, "Well, what if he gets a boner? Like, am I allowed to like bone on the boner? Like, you know, do we acknowledge the boner? Do we not acknowledge the boner?" He did not get a boner. He didn't get a boner. Were you a little <laughs> yeah. bit sad about that? I was a little sad, but he had, I think it's because he had the, like, dick sock. Yeah. I, so maybe it was, like, not allowing him to get boner or whatever. But Maybe it was, like, a chastity belt dick sock. Yeah. Like, it was, like, a tight one that, like, yeah. kept it down. Yeah, kind of tucked it in there. Yeah. So I couldn't tell if there was boner or no boner. But right. But I, I did feel like the pervert because I really wanted to see. <laughs> I was like, we had Merkins on, and I was like, but... I have a bush. Like, you don't need to murk in my bush. It's pretty bushy. They murk in your bush? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's like a saying or something like that. Like, right? Like, they murk in your bush. They, they overdid something <laughs> that you already had. Yeah. Double murk. Yeah. So did they just, did they give you more hair? Because I guess it was yeah. the 70s, right? Yeah. So. It was a little, like, minus kind of trimmed so it was like untrimmed and like a merc and thong kind of like so all the way to the butthole and I was kind of like wait they make was wait was the thong hairy no it's like a it's like a sticky thing so like the stick is in the front and then like the stick is on like above your butt crack okay. and like it's hairy up until like like the middle part where your lips kind of end like okay. butthole lips part so wait Deep. it's okay so here's the bush the beginning mm -hmm. here's the undercarriage yeah is so there soon, hair, just for people who are listening, yeah. we're, we're doing a demonstration. Yeah. <laughs> How far does the Merkin bush go? It goes about there. Okay. It goes down a little bit. So all the lips are covered with hair. Oh. Yeah. Is it itchy? Kind of, because it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of hair, so it's yeah. kind of comical to me, like how much hair it was, and that everybody had one on. So it's just kind of like we all looked like Bob Ross, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's happy little trees. Yeah, that's what it felt like. <laughs> just Bob Rossing it up, you know. Oh my god, mm -hmm. I've never. I don't think I've ever seen like a Merkin in real life. They have them on Etsy. Do they? They do. <laughs> oh, my God. Maybe I should wear one for Halloween. 
You could. You could. I wouldn't wear that little of clothing. You could extend the Merkin. I'm sure they have <clears throat> like the internet. The I'm up. sure they do. I just yeah. stopped at Merkin, but I'm sure they have body Merks. So you actually just looked up Merkins. Yeah, I did. When they were when I got the role, like they were talking about Merkins, and I was like, I like to be prepared. So I was like, whoa, what kind of Merkins are they? And I looked online. I was like, wow, they really have like really good Merkins. Like if you're nude and you want to just see what you would look like with a bush, they they have lace fronts for that. You know? Wow. They do. That's amazing. They do. God. <laughs> movie magic <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what i mean besides like the obvious that there was no sex what was a mainstream set like versus like a porn set and mm, in the end what do you prefer uh they're pretty similar like hurry up and wait kind of thing mm. uh i i think i definitely prefer porn over mainstream be, just because how much time it takes just to like be on set for a like your your moment is like a minute, two minutes, and it took days for you to like go to a fitting. Oh, is your hair the right era? Like, uh, especially a historical the, piece. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I I had a I had a wig on when I went for the auditions, and so I went for with my wig for the fitting, and then they're like, oh yeah, wear wear that wig, and I was like, okay, and I got on the set, and they're like, oh, it's not the right, it's the, not the right length, and I was like, well, what do you mean? And they're like, we're gonna have to cut it, and I'm like, man, this is, this hair does cost a BJ, do you know how much? <laughs> <laughs> pretty expensive like, oh we're just gonna cut a little bit and a little bit starts off at like this and then you know it's like this and then I just had like a little cute bobby thingy but I was just like bro like I could have you could have just bunch put the merkin wigs. on your head I could have put the merkin <laughs> like I have a whole bunch of wigs I could have changed like a, a different hairstyle but they yeah. just like cut it so I was just kind of like like a little like oh motherfucker yeah this Big Magic Johnson better be hot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's they're very similar. Where it's a lot of waiting, uh, a lot of awkward silence. Like uh, there's less communication between the director and the talent, which I didn't like mm. because. I'm used to just being able to walk up to the director and like, hey, boss, like, what do you need? And they're like, no, you do not talk to the director. He's he's directing. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you're like, he's eating I'm, a sandwich. What he's literally doing? eating a sandwich. It's fine. <laughs> so their rules are very similar, but different at the same time. Um, but I still like porn better. Yeah. Because I don't have to wonder what his dick looks like. I can see it. Yes. <laughs> I know, right? And you don't need to murk in I don't the bush. need a murk in, yeah. <laughs> And also, too, like, I mean, the great thing about, for me, working in porn is it's, like, it's often all the same people. Yeah. You work with the same crew, so, it's like, we know everybody. We know you everybody. Know? So it feels very familiar. It's exciting. Like, when you go on set, like, I feel like I'm more excited to see the crew than mm-hmm. my my co-star. Yeah. <laughs> Just as excited for my co-star, but I, I love the crew now. Yeah. You know, like, I have relationships with them and their friends. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just home. Yeah, I mean, you know, I wasn't joking when I said earlier about how everyone loves you. I remember the last time I shot you. Um, when, and they were like, everyone was so excited that like you, it was gonna be Anna. They're like, oh, I love Anna. She's the best. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I mean, for us, you know, people always ask me like, what's the best part of your job? I'm like, the models. Yeah. Like, and what makes a good day is who I'm working with. Yeah. If I'm working with like awesome people, the mm-hmm. day, if everything goes wrong, it's the okay. day is great. Because you had a good day. <laughs> yeah. Because I got to hang out with like people that I love mm-hmm. and like that are fun and make me laugh. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the best part of the job. That is like, a good the day. Sec- for me, like shooting porn, like the sex is like literally the least interesting part of it. It is. And, and every time we cut, like we're making jokes, yeah. we're talking shit you know we're shooting the shit it's just like all of the whole life going on behind the scenes is what's yeah. fun yeah can't give a fuck about the sex at this point yes <laughs> um uh are you still the president of apac yeah so tell us a little bit about that for those of you who don't um know what apac is it's the adult performer advocacy committee but anna fill us in a little bit about like what you do and what the um, organization does in general so we do a lot of um fundraising uh to get funds for performers of all the sex work because i think people just kind of think sex work porn star Mm -hmm. but there's there's a lot of like people that don't perform in mainstream, that don't perform in major cities and things like that. So we try to get funds together to help them get testing or like if they need help with their rent or things like that. Like we just had a fundraiser to provide money for 
Swap LA, Mm -hmm. I think I'm saying it right. And there's another one that it's like leaving my brain, but they're all for organizations that help sex workers. Mm -hmm. And we help current sex workers performing in the industry, like um, connect them with links and things that they might need to know, like what to do for -hmm. for how to prepare for sex, uh, what to do if your agent's not being a good agent, if he's, you know, uh, taking advantage of you or something like that. Um, The APAC committee is really awesome, but I had to like realize that we're advocacy, that we're not like the Avengers. (laughs) 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 When I first got voted into it, I was just like, oh yeah, we're about to fucking stomp in doors and shit. And they're like, no, Anna, we don't, we don't get into personal beefs and stuff like that. We, we can help them. We can like guide them here or there, but we don't, we're not Judge Judy, you know, um, (laughs) So, <laughs> so that kind of like, kind of like made me like a little sad, but I am happy to be in a position of power to help performers in any form that I can. So yeah. if I can help get people out there and help direct people to where they got to go, then I feel like a big kid. <laughs> yeah. I know. Unfortunately, I, I know that feeling of wanting to just save people, but ultimately, you know, especially cause we're dealing with like adults, uh, mm-hmm. all you can do is arm them with information. Yeah. And then they're going to do with that what they will. Yeah, go forth, my baby dove. You know, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's all we can do. And it sometimes it feels like it's not enough, but, mm-hmm. like, it is a lot for some people, you know, yeah. to, like, uh, some of them have no idea what resources are available um, and never would have if we didn't, like, have that platform. Um, and we also work with, like, FSC and... Uh, pineapple support, uh, so anything that's going to help the performers, we're, we're down to help them. Yeah. Yeah. And then for those of you who don't know, FSC is the Free Speech Coalition. It's kind of like our industry trade um, organization. They help, like, fight um, lawsuits. Um, I mean, there's so much they do. Yeah. It's, it's hard they to, lobby like, for us. lobby for us. Yeah. I they're the they're Avengers. Like our, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're like our, I guess that they're like our lobby. Yeah. Yeah. Um, committee. That makes sense. And then pineapple support, it provides mental health for help for adult performers. So yes, it's kind of crazy because, you know, I've been in the industry for 25 years now and none of this shit existed mm-hmm. 15 years ago. No. And to see like how far the industry's come as a community is pretty remarkable. It's cute. We're doing our best. I actually have a therapist through pineapple support. So she, thank you, Danielle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's so nice. And it's just for me personally, it was awesome to find a place where I could get a therapist that was specifically sex worker friendly, mm-hmm. like having to go find a therapist that like, I got to explain this part of my life for you to get me and then like, let you know, I'm, this is not what the therapy's for, you know? I know because <laughs> so often you get people who go, Oh, you're a porn star. That's your problem. Yeah. So let's start with like, yeah. why you're such a damaged person. Right. How does and, anal make you feel? Yeah. You know? Like <laughs> you're like really good. Actually. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I'm talking about something else. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I mean, so often they think, okay, then you're a damaged person because you chose this as your career. So yeah. let, we need to like fix that so that you leave. So finding, Therapists that are sex worker friendly is very difficult. It's hard. And I'm like, bro, we, we all live on earth, so are we not all damaged? <laughs> like, I mean, It's not fair, the porn. <laughs> <laughs> we all got like, you know, it's funny. Sometimes people will say like, oh, every girl in porn is like, you know, suffered some kind of like abuse or something in their lives. I'm like, every girl in the world yeah. has. Yeah. And like guys too, like we all have something. Yeah, every human on the planet, I would I would say arguably has suffered some sort of abuse, Yeah, you know? Yeah. So it's just how people are. We're just yeah. not always nice to each other. No. <laughs> <laughs> Open your Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, what do you think is the biggest opportunity for improvement in the adult industry? Um, I think if, um, there's like a code that companies like follow to shoot their porn. And I've always thought that if they listen to the performer, like since the day I started, if they listen to us and how we would prefer to perform, I think it would just gold would be made. I mean, Mm -hmm. because we were doing that on our OnlyFans and it's Mm -hmm. successful or whatever platform we have. Um, but there's always like stepmom, stepson, you know, like this, this, that, like, Mm -hmm. And, like, sex is so much more than that. Mm -hmm. Like, 
I, I, I'm like super bisexual, but I very rarely have performed in like a girl girl scene where I felt gay, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's like a whole bunch more sex that we are just kind of like ignoring, like, oh no, men don't want to see that. Like, so like not all men are men, you know, not everybody doesn't want to see that. There's people that want to see it. And, um, you know, not everything like is going to like, I'm not saying like, oh, shoot lesbians today and it's going to be as big as like stepmoms and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But like if you tried, you know, to like give care to other genres of porn, like it could all be great. You know, yeah. it could just be because <laughs> there's that argument, right? It's like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Does mm -hmm. everybody want to watch stepmom porn because that's what they want? Or does everybody want to watch that because that's like what's most prolific on Pornhub? Yeah. And so I don't know. I don't know about everybody uh, else, but I have never grown up where any of like my mom or my friend's moms, like none of our moms were Stacy's mom. No. <laughs> like they're actual moms. And I'm like, damn, like, is that really like, is that really like a thing that like people are like, can't wait till my dad gets a hot wife or whatever, mm -hmm. like so I can pretend to fuck her or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I, I totally think it's just like what we're giving them and we've been giving them like the same formula like forever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, just please shake it up because mm -hmm. us performers want to do something else too. Like mm -hmm. a lot of the male talent are, are bored. Mm -hmm. A lot of me talent is bored. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, I mean, so much of these decisions are driven by data, you know, yeah. the data that they get off of tube sites. Yeah. And if most of the porn that's on the tube site is of a certain genre, then people are maybe just watching that because that's what's most readily available to them. Mm -hmm. So you get caught in this loop. Like, mm -hmm. is it really actually, you know, you know, so Jessica Drake said something that was interesting, I thought, once. She was talking about how she did a trans scene for one of her movies for Wicked. Oh, yeah. And that she got a lot of feedback from guys who were like, you know, I would have never really, never sought out a trans scene before. Uh -huh. But I happened to buy your DVD because I'm a fan of you and Wicked. Mm -hmm. And you kind of th threw it in there as a surprise. Right. And I saw it and I found I actually liked it. Yeah. So, like, if people aren't Shocking. introduced to new things. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, how would they ever know that they might like it? A hundred percent. It's like food. Like if you only eat the same thing, you won't even know about all these other cuisines out there. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it is, it's just, just interesting. The idea of introducing like other kinds of genres yeah. to people. And when do they, I mean, so many people only watch porn for free. Like on the I tube know. Site. So if yeah. everything that's there is the same old thing, mm -hmm. then, then they're gonna they do the discover same old new thing. stuff. Uh huh. A hundred percent. We could, we could, we could, we could switch it up. But I think people are afraid of angering the virgins that we cater to. Yeah, there are <laughs> definitely some guys that get like really upset if um, they are accidentally exposed to mm -hmm. like trans new porn stuff, or something like that. Anything. Like, oh, I didn't want to see a dick. Yeah. Like, oh God. Anything. Even if the girl's not wearing the right kind of like sneakers for her tennis scene, they're like, what is that? Those are not the, the like Smithington 3000s that she's supposed to wear. <laughs> 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 they don't like it. <laughs> Oh my god! I'll never. My husband likes to fish. I'll never forget. There was like a layout in penthouse. Um, not that my husband masturbates to penthouse because nobody masturbates to magazines. Nothing against penthouse. Your stuff's beautiful. <laughs> but um, there and there was like a fishing shoot and like and and he was just like no, no, no. And, like he the, could tell that she doesn't fish. Yeah, no, exactly. He's like, look at the way she's holding that fishing rod, and he's like, what's with the waiters? He's like very upset about it. Like, Sorry, man. Sorry, I'll let them know. She doesn't like, actually get hire a girl that actually fish next time, okay? Yeah, or get a consultant, a fishing yeah, consultant. Yeah, to Very teach important. her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fishing liaison. <clears throat> um, what porn related cause or issue are you the most passionate about? Um, diversity. Mm -hmm. I would have to say. Um, ha. <laughs> Uh, I just happen to follow like the major companies and I like to see what they do during certain times of the year and how much they care or don't care. And uh, I, I, it's not my first time speaking out. I feel like I do it all the time. Mm -hmm. So for whatever reason this year, uh, a certain company um, was sponsoring this award show and I sat at their table and uh, they DM'd me like, oh, Anna, so sorry you don't feel like diversity is our number one priority. And I was like, it's not. Like, where is it? And they're like, oh, look at our website we have a a black this and a black that and it was during black history month and i was like yeah but what did you like 
what else? Like, did you say anything towards them being black and their accomplishments? Like, do you care that this person's trans? Like, do you care? You know, um, especially like porn. It's all, we all fuck. Like, mm -hmm. why, why is like the top banner of like girls like the same, like they could almost be sisters, you mm -hmm. know? It should really always look like a rainbow of people. Mm -hmm. Like it should never like reflect one, one type of person, one type of body, one type of style. It should always be like, changing and diverse and uh i'm gonna make a lot of people very uncomfortable until they kind of like get it like you know when when you're like in the seat um like a lot of my friends are trans so i can't help but not advocate for them and yeah. then like i have a lot of fat friends and like they're always complaining like oh i'll never get to shoot for this or that or maybe i got that one shoot that one time and like never again and i'm like she's phenomenal like mm -hmm. she shouldn't be like no, never again. Like, no, you should be shooting all the time. Like, you know, mm -hmm. so if I can get more people up there, I'm going to try my hardest. Yeah. And what's interesting, too, is that we see, like, how incredibly successful these different genres can be. I they mean, are. The trans genre is incredibly it's successful. Huge. Like, the BBW genre is incredibly huge. successful. Huge, yeah. So it's not like you're the idea of like embracing this diversity is just like throwing money away. I feel uh, like has been proven to be not true. It's a hundred percent. I mean, like, I think like the whole like social media movement of us being like uh, influencers now, like mm -hmm. proves that it's not true because mm -hmm. they're, they're more popular than ever, mm -hmm. you know? And like, we hear stories in the mainstream of like people dating trans people or BBWs or what, like, you know, it's not the same anymore. And mm -hmm. like, I feel like we're a little outdated on that. Like we are trying to be inclusive, but like we'll put like one here, one there, like mm -hmm. maybe for this month and we'll put the rainbow up for that and then like never mention it again. And I'm like, no, it shouldn't just be like this week, this month. It should be all the time. Like people should feel included all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how does it, you, um, recently were named the, you've been, you're the most awarded black female in, in porn, in porn history. history, right? I think so. I haven't like recounted cause I know, uh, well, we have Pornhub coming up, <laughs> so that might change, but, uh, so far I believe that's true. <laughs> when... Was there a specific award that put you over the edge at that point? Or did somebody just like sit down and like count all your awards and you're like, oh, wait a minute. Um, was, like won them all. <laughs> <laughs> it was XBiz uh, last year. I had won uh, a couple of like a best sex scene, um, best girl, girl performance. I think I won like two or three awards and mm -hmm. that like put me like at, I think I now have like seven or eight awards and which is like, a big number to me, but like such a small number compared to other people's mm -hmm. like catalog of trophies. Mm -hmm. um, I was like super excited about it. And like, I really wanted people to kind of talk about it more. And it seemed like they were like, oh, well, they're not all our awards or like, mm, does Urban X Awards really count? Like, mm -hmm. I didn't really get the like that I was hoping to get with that announcement. It just yeah. kind of felt like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I mean, how do you, and ultimately, do you think that awards are like important? I, mean, I don't they, like, yes, no. Yeah. Why, why, like a little bit of both? Yeah. I think like uh, just from like, you know, when you're little, you get awarded for doing things that you do good. Like right. you showed up every day, you get an award. Like you got good grades, you get an award. Mm -hmm. It's like crazy to me that in porn that we're like, this girl has the best pussy. Like, how? <laughs> We all have a vagina. Like, how is this one the best? Or, yeah. you know, so it's weird how we're awarded. Um, I do appreciate awards. I think more people deserve them. I don't really, I really don't respect our awards because of how they've been, like, recycled. Like, I don't think one woman deserves to win a female performer of the year, like, three years, four years in a row. Like, that does mm -hmm. that just doesn't make sense to me. Like the like the clear favoritism in it is just like everybody's like sitting there in the awards like you know like we all know that it's mm -hmm. like we can tell from the nominees who's gonna win mm -hmm. so it's almost doesn't feel like an accomplishment winning one um the fact that like every award um category also too is like 
20 nominees or something. Yeah. Like, ludicrous number. A hundred percent. Feels a bit silly sometimes. It feels. It's just like, you're just trying to like sell seats. They're trying to the sell awards. seats. They really, they really are like, it's <clears throat> to me, it's just, they want the nominees to promote the show. So that way they have people to come to the show yeah. and whoever did it the most or mm-hmm. whoever gifted a bag or whatever mm-hmm. uh, gets to win. And that's not how I'm used to winning things. Like I want to win cause I won, you know? Yeah. So I, I, I kind of like, I just like going to the awards because I like, well, if you're not going to award me that I'm going I'm to show up like the award, like mm-hmm. I am the award. You are the award. <laughs> I'm the award. Yes. Every time I go, I'm the award. Yes. And I want everybody else to know. <laughs> like, you might have won bitch, but. <laughs> <laughs> what um, means success to you? Um, just like uh, the feedback, like how people feel around me makes me feel successful. Like, um, people coming to me for help, like people thanking me for speaking up. Um, just, just anything like people being happy around me makes me feel pretty successful. Mm -hmm. Um, I used to think it was like having a whole bunch of money or this or that, but like money comes and goes, um, looks come and go, people come and go. Um, so as long as like while they're around me or like my influence on them is positive, then I feel successful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that that's a great measuring stick of success. Yeah. (laughs) And you know, for, and it's sad too, because every award season I see a lot of girls like upset because they they don't win. They They're sad. Yeah. And that's when I feel like telling people, and I bring this up a lot, it's okay guys. I've won like literally two awards in my 25 year career. You see? (laughs) I've never won an AVN. It's fine. It's not real. It's not real. It's It's okay. It's not real. (laughs) Totally not bitter about it whatsoever. That's why I never bring it up. Mm -hmm. But it's. (laughs) It's... But ultimately, it really is okay. Like, I used to care a lot about it when Mm -hmm. I was younger. Because it hurts. You know, when you you work really hard and then you don't get recognition, like, that sucks. Like, it's going to hurt anybody's feelings. And also, too, when you know a lot of it comes from, like, depending on the company that you work for. Yeah. Uh, And how much, like, (laughs) they give to the... Yeah, but, yeah. It's not really fair. No. Like, I I think it took me to, like, year five of being in the industry to kind of, like, see it, like, for what it actually is. And I was like, I was sucking... I was trying to do all this shit to wit. Yeah. I have nothing to prove. Because here's the thing, like, and I'm not even, like, fully clear on who makes the awisho- the um, decisions for the awards because when we talk about like the Academy mm-hmm. Awards mm-hmm. like it's the Academy it's all the people who have previously won awards right they become part of the Academy and they have these voting rights so that yeah. feels like kind of democratic somewhat yeah right yeah and with like I mean and I guess I'm specifically referring to like ABN I don't know how I'm sure that they have but like who are the people that are voting from what I understand, it's like five old dudes. Really? Yeah. It's like always been a bunch of old dudes. And I'm like, okay, so like these old dudes are judging my porn and they say I'm not good at sucking dick and they've never sucked a dick a day in their life. Well, maybe they have. I don't know what John does on his time off, you know? Yeah. But like, you know, like to be judged by a whole bunch of old dudes, I'm like, meh. I feel like it should be a collective industry decision. It should be. I would. Or I would a fan much rather. Decision, which I guess they have the fan awards. I don't even believe those are. <clears throat> I don't believe those are real either. But I, I would feel a lot better if it were like, like Angela, Kiera, Isaiah, like top Ricky Johnson. Yeah. Like if if those people were the ones who were picking the winners, yeah. I would feel a whole lot better than five old white dudes. You know, yeah. like I'm not I'm not too happy. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like I have. Once I realized the awards weren't going to be fair, like, or you could win if you're willing to do other things to to win, but I'm not, I just have nothing to prove and I'm just going to go on my like path of literally what I want to do. Like, I'm not going to try to put three dicks in my ass to get an award. Yeah. Because I'm not going to get an award. So I'm cool. (laughs) I wonder if there is like a a time that there could be, cause you know, I think the SAG awards is like, that's the, um, screen actors guild awards. Mm-hmm. So that's the actors who vote. Right. I don't, I don't know. I don't know much I about think Hollywood, s- but I think that's how it works. I think so. Wouldn't it be great to have an award ceremony where the people in the industry vote for the people were actually the-, the people who voted. It would be that's so much more awesome because yeah. then you would, I, I, I feel like that would be such a res- more respectful award. Like yeah. your peers thought you were. Yes. Dumb. I don't care about what these old dudes or 
somebody's fans that live in a basement and jack off think, you know, like yeah. these people that work like with me Like the people who work with me. you and yeah. see you, see yeah. the time and effort you put what into it. What if the crew it? could... Uh, <gasps> Imagine like all the the crew like you guys vote on who's. Oh my god! Just think how much nicer a lot of performers would be because they're to so. I've the seen crew. them. They, I don't know whoever thought it was cool to not be nice to the crew, but I have seen it, and they're I've like, "You're too. just like you know, like throwing the baby wipes at them and stuff." I'm like, ooh, ah, ooh. yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, no. I've, I've had a, I've worked with a couple of performers, and honestly, this is super rare. Like mm-hmm. most people that I work with are really really lovely. Yeah, but there's been a couple, and like if they're rude to my crew or rude to like even like my PA the lowest person they're mm-hmm. on my no list Mm-mm. I'm like no yeah. I mean, you're not bringing that kind of energy to say no. you're not you're not treating these people like these people work so hard yeah and they're working hard to make you look, look good, good. Like, those are those people are on your side yeah if they weren't here you there you wouldn't be seen yeah. you know literally yeah. so yeah <clears throat> do you have any goals in the industry that you still want to accomplish uh you know, <laughs> I was wondering, <laughs> Dread. <laughs> Dread? Dread was one, one that was on my accomplishment list. But as the days go by, you know, I'm like, I don't know. I don't need to. I don't need to. It's like climbing Mount Everest. Like, do I need to climb the mountain? <laughs> I don't need to climb the mountain. Like, I really wanted to. Like, I had, like, energy to, like, jump on it. I really wanted to do Mandingo before mm-hmm. he retired. And then I guess, like, Dread is kind of like the new Mandingo. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, he's uh, another Mandingo. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, man, every time I look at his dick and like uh, in a scene and the girl's just trying to suck it, like she's just like can't even like can't even get her mouth like on it. And My I'm, like, favorite oh. is Jane Wilde. There's some pictures of Jane Wilde she's so with, little. with Dred's dick. Yeah. And it literally looks like she is like a six foot long like a, subway, a subway sandwich. sandwich. And she's just like, yeah, like you can't even like I'm going to piss myself off with that because I'm used to like accomplishing something but like I would have to like lick it the whole way just to like get it wet and then by the time I get over here this side's dry you know like <laughs> there's so much going on like I I I, oh. I, I see girls like uh Avery Jane and Alexis Tay like they just take the dick in the ass like no problem yeah and I'm like you know I just don't have the energy to be that good. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I will say, though, you know what I learned from Lucy Hart, actually, mm-hmm. is that everybody's, like, anal situation is different. It and is. And you can go get surgery to get to become better at anal. So he mm. was telling me – sorry, she mm-hmm. was telling me that there is a doctor in New York, I think, um, and – the doctor can like, because some people's anal cavity goes straight back, and yeah. those are the ones that tend to be better with the anal because yeah. it just goes like, you uh-huh. know what I mean? Like it goes smooth, straight in, it's a smooth. Loop. Yeah, and then some people's maybe like curved down. Yeah, or I'm like a curver. Kind of tweak. Yeah, and so it's like more painful because it tends to hit the walls. Yeah. So yeah, Lucy was telling me you can go get like I think like your anal cavity straightened. Wow. Or like do something so wow. that you can take dick in your ass better. That's probably my problem because it definitely, like, it can go in my butt. Like, my butt can stretch open, but it just, like, dirt stops. And yeah. I'm like, well. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So you probably don't. Your anal cavity probably. probably curves. Yeah. Slopes so. off. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> but then <laughs> do I want to get this surgery? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean. So I can slam dick in my ass better. It sounds good. Yeah. I don't but know. like, how badly do you want? That's a lot of effort. And you know, I just don't. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of effort for. And like, we love Dread. He is we so love Dredd. lovely. He's like, I had him on this podcast. He's, He's a nice man, nicest man. Yeah. But like, I don't know if we love you that much, Dread. No. That like, we're gonna go get anal surgery. No. So you I feel like that's like the last on like my to do list. Like within <laughs> porn is like giant dicks because I've had some pretty big ones, but I've like avoided like the humongous ones mm-hmm. for the most part. And like Dread was like next up on the list, and I was like. I don't want to do it and I can't do it. You know, mm-hmm. like I want to finish. I want to like Avery Jane that dick and mm-hmm. I can't. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah. so I might just bow out gracefully. <laughs> so speaking of penis size, because this is something that comes up on this show a lot and uh, guys want to know what is your like preferred size? You know, there's different days. There's different days. Like overall, I'm not a size queen. Like I don't prefer 
bigger dicks. Uh, I thought I did. Uh, my body told me you you don't. <laughs> like I just your don't. mind told you one. Yeah, thing. my mind was like climb that mountain, and my body was like, but why? Get off. <laughs> like, you don't belong here. <laughs> so. Uh, I prefer like a, like a, I don't know. I think guys care about dick sizes more than girls. Cause I'm not 100%. walking around with a ruler to know like, Oh, this is a six incher. That's what I like. 100%. You know, um, I, I can deal with a smaller dick. I, my, our vaginal canals are not like this cup, you know, yeah. like it's only so big and I'm more of like a clitoral stimulation kind of person too. Mm-hmm. So fingers are good for me. Not saying that I want a dick that's like this big, but like, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know, like five or six inches is is pretty good to me. Uh, I'm not like a, I also am not like, like don't want necessarily like a small dick. Like, you know, sometimes I want to be like a little murdered in the vagina, just Mm -hmm. a little, little mayhem, just Mm -hmm. flip the walls a little bit. Mm -hmm. But that's on a, that's on like every other third Tuesday. But, but overall I prefer like a steady, nice, like. Like five, six inch penis. Like a, like a boyfriend penis. Yeah, like what they call the boyfriend dick. I like the yeah. boyfriend dick because the other ones, like you have to do maintenance after. Like you had fun, <laughs> but you have to like, are you okay? You know, patch up the holes, like fix the leaks and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're just like wounded. Take a hop, Epsom salt Yeah, bath. you do, you do. And like, it's those are fun, but I like, I don't want to be like wounded after. So yeah. I like a non-wounding dick. <laughs> yeah, it's like you don't want to run a marathon every day. No, no, no. It's like a light jog. Yeah, I'm, I'm like... A, a pillow princess on usual days, like Monday through Friday, I just just put something in there, take it out, and I'm happy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't fuck up the foundation. Like <laughs> <laughs> what's on your bucket list outside of work? Uh, um if I could meet Dwayne Johnson and see his dick, I'd be really excited. <laughs> or that guy, uh, Roman, the wrestler dude, then he's on WWF now. I don't know. He just keeps popping up on my Twitter feed. And he he kind of looks like Johnny Castle, maybe. Oh, I really? Like. Yeah. So maybe if they have the same dick, then I'd be like, okay, maybe that'll be like a bucket list scene. Mm-hmm. That would be kind of cool to get like a mainstream person to have sex with a porn per- performer. Mm-hmm. If they could collide inside of my holes, that would be awesome. I, f- I feel like that. Ha- Wait, are we talking about, hold on. Like if I could get Dwayne Johnson and like, Ricky Johnson. Oh, at the same time. At the same time. Oh. That would be cool. Oh. That would be really cool. I feel cool. like that mu- that's probably happened to somebody at some point. Because I thought you were saying like a celebrity with a porn star. And I was like, oh, uh, like, no. They slide in your DMs all the time. No, no, no. Sure. On their own, they're not exciting. They're just, they're just normal people, you yeah. know. Um, but if I could... One, if I could see any part of Dwayne in person, I would be very excited. Mm. He's, like, been my celebrity crush since he was making people smell what he was cooking. Really? Uh, Yeah. What is it about him? that Those underwear that he was beating up people in, the little bull, the rock underwear. Oh, when he was a wrestler. Wrestler, yeah. He just... Like, Did you watch a lot of wrestling? Yeah. yeah I was going to say, you mentioned WWE up with your brothers at the beginning. Yeah. And now we're like full circle back to wrestling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That guy. I have never tried to like, I think I tried to DM him one time and I was like, this is stupid and like deleted it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if I could meet him in person, that's like on my bucket list. Aww. I might have to do like a charity or something just to like, hey. You hear that, Dwayne? Want to slide into Anna's DMs. I, I'm very. I won't. I won't say anything. She's very discreet. I'm very discreet. I will keep. I'll just take a Polaroid and like put it in my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I'd make earrings out of it. Honestly, <laughs> be hot. Because there's not much. Like I'm not like an adrenaline junkie. I don't want to like jump out of a plane or anything. Like I've talked sh- shit about a lot of people, so my karma <laughs> might not end well. So uh, I'm gonna stick to things that are like low impact. <laughs> <laughs> so Dwayne, so having sex with Dwayne Johnson feels like safe. Yeah, that's safe. That's as safe as my karma will allow. <laughs> oh my god. Well, Anna, thank you so much for coming on. It's been such a pleasure. Always thank you for to having see me. You. I know. Thank you. Um, and if you're a member of my Patreon, we're gonna do a little bonus Q and A after this with some of your questions. Um, mm-hmm. Anna, do you want to tell everybody where they can find you online? <laughs> you can find me online at A N A F O Triple X. If you're on any platform, just type that in because I get deleted and redeleted and. You know, so just type in Anna Fox and I should be there. <laughs> yeah, we were we would promote her Instagram, but it was just deleted. Just deleted. 
<sighs> do you have like a link site that people can go to? Um, I had to take it down because of Instagram. So like I just say that. Just go to OnlyFans. Yeah, okay? just go to OnlyFans. I'm there. I'm low key. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course, if you guys want to find me, you can for now find me on Instagram and Twitter um, at Holly Randall. Uh, go to hollylinks.com for all of the links to all my stuff. And then, of course, um, if you want to support this podcast and get access to bonus content, go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered. Another big thanks to Blue Chew for sponsoring this episode. Thank you guys so much for being here, and I will see you next week. Yay!